So I'm going to use the shell method to compute the volume of the solid of revolution given by revolving the region bounded by f of x equal to x squared minus 2x and the line g of x equal to 2x about the y-axis and the line x equal to minus 2. So first, I want to sketch my region. First thing I should do is figure out where the two graphs intersect. So that's just x squared minus 2x equals 2x or x squared minus 4x equals 0. So they'll agree at 0 and 4. So I plot those points right there and there. Okay, I can plot everything off of 2x. So we'll have the point 0, 0 and the point 4, 8. That's where they agree. 2x is aligned, so I connect the dots. And then x squared minus 2x is a parabola. The sign in front of the x squared is positive, so that's going to face up. Okay, you might be a little worried that this thing goes below the x-axis. That's not a problem. When we compute the height of our cylinders, that's just going to be done physically by looking at the top minus the bottom. Going under the x-axis will have no effect on that. All right, so we're going to take this region here. I'm going to revolve it around the y-axis. We know that's going to sweep out a whole bunch of cylinders going from 0 to 4. So if I fix an x, I want to take one of these cylinders and get an idea of what its area is going to be. So let's take a look. For a cylinder, I need to know the radius and the height if I want to get the area. So here, if we take a look at this cylinder here, we'll notice that the radius is just going to be how far we come out from x. So my radius is x. For my height, I take a look at the edge of the cylinder. We notice the top of the cylinder is going to be on the line y equals 2x. So that point there is just over x up 2x. For my bottom point, that's the lower graph. So that's going to be x squared minus 2x. So our height is always going to be top function minus bottom function. The height here is just going to be the difference. So that's going to wind up being 2x minus x squared minus 2x or 4x minus x squared. Okay, make sure you use your parentheses here or you're going to lose a sign. So now I can chug ahead. The area is 2 pi rh. r is x. h is 4x minus x squared. And now I can plug this into an integral to get a volume. Over here, I have my volume is the integral from 0 to x of the area function for each cylinder, dx. We put in our 4x squared minus x cubed, moving the x to the inside. And now I can just take this thing's antiderivative, and then we put in 4 and 0, take the difference. 2 pi comes out in front. We add 1, flip it over. Add 1, flip it over, gives me 4 thirds x cubed minus x to the fourth over 4. Putting in 4, putting in 0 is going to give me 0, so we don't have to worry about it. Putting in 4, it's going to be 256 over 3 minus 64. And then multiplying that by 2 pi gives me 128 pi over 3. So that's about 40-something times pi. Let's try about the axis x equal to minus 1. I draw the picture again. Well, note, I'm not going to draw this wing in here because this wing is going to wind up out here somewhere. So when I go about x equal to minus 1, we're going to have a little bit of a gap in the center of our region. Again, I'm going to pull out a representative cylinder. Let's take a look. Okay, the height won't change at all. It's still top function minus bottom function, so the height is still 4x minus x squared. What will change is the radius. Before, we used the radius of x, because that's the distance from the point x to our axis of revolution, which was at x equals 0. So the distance from 0 to x is just x. Now we're going from x to the axis of revolution at x equal to minus 1. So the distance is going to be 
the distance from 0 to x plus the distance from 0 to minus 1. Well, that's going to be x plus 1 or x plus 1. I now have enough to get a new area function, 2 pi radius times height. So we have 2 pi x plus 1 times 4x minus x squared. I expand that, put it in my integral, and now I can just chug away with my volume formula. Okay, so we're going to take the antiderivative of this thing, done there or so. I'm going to go from 0 to 4. The 0 goes in, has no effect. So we're just going to put a 4 in there. My numbers come out, and we see that we get 64 pi. We would expect this to be bigger. Since this rotates about a bigger circle, we're going to expect that that will have a bigger area than we had here where we go around a tighter circle. So note, 64 pi is bigger than 42-ish pi. So this makes sense.